And now let's move on to NBA. Jim, uh, you had a great call last night, Houston Phoenix, on the over. Uh, I, again, my leans, I just didn't look into it enough, but it seemed obvious that the under and uh, and uh, Boston was the play. I didn't give either of those. Let's read our records before we get into it. My official picks, not my leans. Official picks in NBA, 40 and 25, plus 12.8 units, plus 18% ROI. Wow. Jim's official picks in NBA, 47 and 39, plus 6 units, plus 6.5% ROI. Those are both very excellent records. Hopefully we'll be able to maintain. Uh, on today's card, I think I'm seeing a bunch of things that I'm liking. I don't even know where to start, but let's start with the Knicks in Toronto, okay? I'm from New York. You're from Toronto, Jim. Uh, Toronto, obviously a very, very impressive team, right? Uh, more impressive than the Houston win was that the, was they bounced right back on a back-to-back -back and rolled uh, New Orleans. Still, though, uh, not the most consistent team in the world, and I'm not totally sure why New York, why the Knicks should be getting eight points here. I'm leaning that way, and I'm definitely leaning the Knicks team total over. What's your take on this game, Jim? You know, the Raptors are taking a lot of flack from our Toronto media and yeah. even my friends. And then they stepped up with those two big games. I, before you go out, I, this is not so much a fade of Toronto as it is just, uh, you know, a typical situation where why should New York be getting eight points oh, here? Oh, and I know, and I don't, I'm not yeah. taking anything away from what you're saying. I think that the Raptors f uh, pick their spots to step up for mm -hmm. whatever reason. Yeah. And a lot of times when there's a good feeling in that dressing room, they come back home and they don't play the way we expect them to play, at least for a full game. That Bulls game last week is mm -hmm. a perfect example yeah. of, of just let, taking their foot off the gas. Now, I'm very concerned with DeLon Wright and Norm Powell out for the Raptors. They're very important guys on the perimeter and on the ball defending. And that gives Hardaway Jr. a nice... Uh, opportunity to hit threes and he's become a legitimate second scoring option be behind big dick zingas i think there's a problem with the raptors not being able to bring out the long right norm powell to slow up slow down the perimeter scoring so i'm concerned yeah I'm concerned so about this sounds game. like you're agreeing that you like the knicks plus eight I, I, I do, but I'm not going to take them. The okay. Raptors have been too good, yeah. but I do. You're right. My lean would be Knicks plus eight, and I'm going to leave this game alone because okay. I'm concerned about them coming back off yeah. the road. Yeah, and Lowry, when he, when he, I mean, Lowry can, when he's, when he's uh, you know, work clicking offensively, which he has been recently, uh, you know, they will cover big favorite spreads. Uh, Skuma Steve saying, I see team total over 104 for the Knicks. Yeah, some places have 104. Uh, Pinnacle has 104 and a half uh, plus 100. Uh, you also mentioned that, that they won't be able to slow the Knicks down. I'm thinking about the team total over. 104 and a half. What do you think about that for the Knicks? I, you know, I think that is a that spot makes sense because of Wright and Powell being yeah. out. They're very, very important guys on, on, on our team, and uh, the, the just the, the defending is not going to be as strong. Okay, I will take them again in the NBA. I've been sort of like trying to push myself. Anytime I'm feeling like if I don't give a play, it would just be a lack of balls, like yesterday with the Boston at Golden State game. I will give both of those uh, on today's uh, card. Uh, it does appear to be some some movement, some money coming in on Toronto from Pinnacle, but I will give the Knicks plus eight minus one hundred two, and I will give the Knicks team total over uh, one hundred four and a half plus a hundred. Does concern me a little bit that uh, that. Uh, that some money does appear to be coming in on on, on Toronto's way, but I will uh, I will take that one. I have a bunch of other plays that I'm liking as well. All right, Jim, what do you want to give for today's NBA card? Oh, there's a lot that I yeah, like. Yeah, there is a lot that I like. Um, well, why don't we just go right to the Clippers at Cavs? Okay, I know a lot a lot of people love talking about the Cavs. I went off on the Clippers at the beginning of the year, saying how bad they were. They started out four and zero. I took a lot of shit on the forum, and um, it looks at this point like I was right. And, mm -hmm. and the reason why the Clippers are bad is because they have nobody that's able to distribute the ball. Tio Dosich gets hurt, and then Patrick Beverly and Danilo Gallinari are, are great at moving the ball around and setting up opportunities. They're both mm -hmm. out on the sidelines. Rivers is just not capable of doing it. The Clippers are playing very ugly basketball, and the Cavaliers want to keep this three-game winning streak going. Now, the one thing that has scared me this year is, that, is the Cavs are 0-3 in home games following a road trip this mm -hmm. season. Mm -hmm. So why are they not mentally prepared to play when they come back home? That's a concern. But I'm going to take the Cavaliers to cover. Wow. Okay. This is actually, I'm liking a lot of plays on the card today as well. This is one of the games that I'm like, I'm just going to pass on this one. All right. J Jim's going to take the Cavs. Another one where slight money coming in on the Hippers on Pinnacle, but that's, as we've seen, very, uh, can change in a heartbeat. Minus six and a half, minus 102. Is that okay? Minus six and a half, minus 102 is what I've got. Okay. My man, Ibrahim. Um, out of Norway, uh, like second half Cavs minus two and a half. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. uh, that makes sense. Um, but I uh, 
Oh, here, Hako Schofield says Cavs win fucking easy. Ah, okay. Says Clippers okay. suck ass. That makes me feel good. Uh, yeah. Too good to be true says good bet. Uh, Jim Tablack says Clippers can't stay healthy. Mm -hmm. Alonzo, my man Alonzo, our man Alonzo mm -hmm. says, uh, of course, Cavs tonight. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I'm, I like this. Jose Ruiz says Clippers no defense. Um, you know, Jesus Cabrera likes Cavs first half. Uh, what up, Jesus? Much love, man. And uh, I like it. Yeah, yeah. That is a, it's just a tricky one. I'm just still not sure I trust the Cavs with their worst defense in a spot like this. But uh, I'm certainly not going to talk you off, and I'm certainly not betting uh, betting uh, the Clippers here. That's for sure. All right, uh, let's move on. Well, let's just move on. Let's let's throw on another one here. Uh, Miami and Washington. Uh, I've had a very good read on Washington recently. Uh, I didn't have the. That's so frustrated. I didn't have the balls to give the under in the first game Miami Washington play and the Miami team total under. I said I like both of those. Those are both in my leans category, but not official picks. Now it's the uh, rematch. I'm not totally sure I like the under here, but I do think I'm liking Miami at least to cover the five points uh, to bounce back here. Uh, Miami's an inconsistent team with some ups and downs, but uh, I think that uh, you know Dragic should be okay, and, uh, and and I think Whiteside has some has some 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 fight in him. And uh, my, Washington is good; they're great with that backcourt. But I'm leaning Miami plus five, and I think I'm going to give it. What do you think, Jim? See, I'm I'm leaning Wizards here, mm -hmm. and I'm concerned that you're not there mm -hmm. with me so i'll break it down with you and mm -hmm. we can figure it out together uh john wall completely dominated uh, yes. their game on wednesday night he 27.6 assists just an okay line for him but he was plus 18 in yeah. 38 minutes they were minus nine when he wasn't on the floor so dragic has a lot of heart will he take it upon himself to play better i i assume so but he's just not in wall's league right now one of the reasons why i like the wizards here and let's break this down beal only went six for 19 in that contest mm -hmm. and the Wiz still won easily mm -hmm. now they're coming back home i don't see this why this contest will be any different i like the wizards here they've been playing better defensively and uh beal made a big point about saying the key to this Wizards team becoming elite is their defense. Yes, which I have been, and I have I have a pretty good read on Washington, I think, and I've been on their unders uh, since that happened. And again, I just didn't have the balls to give the under in their last game against Miami, uh, which did cash. Uh, I'm on Miami, plus five, minus 102. That's a definite official pick. Jim, what do you want to do? You want to go head to head? I do. I uh -oh. do want to go. I don't want to go, but I will go okay. if necessary. Well, it is a split line. So we can give you the heritage line, which is minus four and a half, minus one ten, actually, right now. I love it. Uh, yeah, so it's very possible that uh, Jim could win and I could push. Jim and I doesn't happen often, but we are going head to head, baby. I'm on Miami plus five, minus one hundred two. Jim's on Washington minus four and a half, minus uh, minus one ten. I'm sure there'll be a lot of commentary in the uh, in the chat box. Alondo Shiver says he's going to start off fast. Yeah, I did also have Washington in the first half in there as one of my leans that I bet in their last game. So we'll see. I'm going to take my. Miami on the uh, on, on on the full game and um I know that Gortat has a tough time with Whiteside. Yeah, I yeah. know that. But Markeith Morris is very tough and he's gonna mm -hmm. have to come in and help all game long. All right. Lot of disagreement. Lot of disagreement here. Uh, too good to be true likes Miami. Never faded likes the Wiz. Gonzalo Lopez likes the Wizards money line, which is kind of a weak sauce opinion. But yeah, I hear you. Uh, you know, Jose Ruiz appears to be liking uh, the Wizards. Uh, Alonzo Shivers likes Heat to, in the first half. Mets Junkies Trap House likes Washington's defense. Uh, Alonzo Shivers like uh, Reggie likes really like Miami, Pete. So a lot of disagreement on this game. Uh, look, you do see that and if you if you watch my uh, uh this goes all the way to the top disagreement if you watch my uh, uh into the weekend with bet dsi show uh, every week you'll see that there are many weeks where sharps the big multi-million dollar sharp long-term profit accounts are oftentimes on the opposite side of games you know so it doesn't necessarily mean that uh, that one of us is wrong here for uh, for, for for going opposite hako schofield says wizards win hako schofield says pete might lose the miami game uh espirito late says no one in miami can check wall that is true uh all right uh, okay let's see all right a lot a lot of a lot of disagreement all right so we're gonna go up Head to head on this one. Let's move on to the Detroit Indiana game. This is uh, obviously Detroit has been a very impressive team in general this year. This is a game where I'm leaning over and leaning the Detroit team total over. I did get burned on the Detroit team total over in their last game. I think it was just a lean though, but it was uh, it was something that I bet. Uh, they got a lot of block shots. They were, Milwaukee played a great defensive game. Indiana's trying to pick up the pace here, so I'm liking the under and the uh, sorry the over and the Detroit team total over. What do you think about this one, Jim? I'm with you totally All on right. the over. Okay. Yes. Uh, McMillan wants his. Pacers to play faster. He, he says even the 116, 113 went over the Grizzlies. They weren't playing fast yeah. enough. He wants them to get out and push the ball, and it's working. Uh, and the Pacers have a soft defense. They were up 17 in the fourth, and they led the Grizzlies back in it. 
And the Pacers still have trouble defending the paint. Mm -hmm. You know, and they're going to yep. have their hands full with Andre Drummond. So the Pistons are 10 and 4. They shot 35% and had 18 turnovers and just barely lost to Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. They will shoot better tonight. My lean is Pistons. I'm not going to take it because I think that the over is a really nice spot. Mm -hmm. And I've had trouble, you know, when I bet on the Pacers, they've won. And when I bet mm -hmm. against the Pacers, mm -hmm. they've won as well. So I, I'm having a trouble... Trouble reading the Pacers, so I, I'm just going to take the Pistons over and feel confident on the it. The Pistons team total over. No, sorry, oh. the whole game. The over. whole game over. Yeah. Okay, uh, best line right now would be at uh, bookmaker two hundred nine and a half minus one ten. It is a split line two hundred nine and a half or two ten. I will go on that one with you. Uh, the full game over two hundred nine and a half minus one ten. I will also take the Detroit team total over, which is one hundred three and a half minus one fourteen. And I'd also be leaning to triple up on this game on the first half over, which is just one hundred seven. What do you think about that one, Jim? <laughs> oh, sorry, Project Carpe Diem says my sister defends the key better than the Pacers. <laughs> Very nice. I'm uh, sorry about the, taking the Pistons team mm -hmm. over. Yeah. No, no. Uh, the first half over with 107 doubling up on that one. You know, I, I think that is... Um, Maybe. Yeah. I, you know, I, I, I don't see anything wrong with it. Uh, it mm -hmm. makes sense that the Pacers are going to come out flying and the Pistons are going to come out flying mm -hmm. too. They're going to be upset. Mm -hmm. I, I like that a lot. What is it again? 107? My sister defends the key. To, I just got... That's a, du that's a double on Chandra there. That's a... Uh, <laughs> Ooh, that's a good one. Funny. That's a good one. I might project carpe diem. I don't know if you wrote that one, uh, but if you did, I might use that one in the future. Thank you for that joke. And if I do use it, you should use it too. If 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 if, if we use it in the future, we will say uh, project carpe diem wrote that one. If someone else wrote that one, project carpe diem, let us know who it is. That, that's a pretty damn funny one. It's good, man. It's good. But I agree with him completely. I think that the the Pacers. I mean, we've loved the way Sabonis is playing. Okay. We've talked about it constantly, but they're going to have trouble. They don't have enough big bodies. Yeah, yeah. They did meet recently. Uh, Detroit rolled them uh, at, at home, and that game went over. So I'll just go on it two ways. Detroit team total over 103.5 minus 114, and the over 209.5, and, and Jim is on the uh, is on the over 209.5 as well. I'm interested in doubling up on this game. Oh, okay. I'm so confident oh, okay. in the over here that I, right. I, I'm interested in it. Uh, so I'm going to take the first half over as oh, well. Oh, shit. All right. First half over 107 minus 106. I'm doubling on it with the Detroit one. I'm not going to triple up on it because just anything can happen. But Jim's going to take the uh, first half over 107 uh, minus minus 106. All right. Uh, let's move on. Let's move on. Clippers Cleveland we covered. Toronto Detroit we covered. Uh, Utah Brooklyn had no overnight line. We'll get to that in a second. OKC and the Spurs. That's an interesting game. Uh, the Spurs obviously have uh, have uh, you know a team that is just well coached. But you know they're still trying to figure things out. Uh, great call on the Spurs under recently. Didn't you have a winner with the Spurs under in their last yeah, game? Yeah, it was a great the Spurs call. Wolves. Yes. And uh, OKC, what's up with them? I'm thinking that maybe this might be a sneaky game to take a shot with the uh, with the over. The Spurs can be higher scoring when they uh, when uh, you know at times we've seen that for sure. And OKC, I mean, you know, low scoring, but they have guys in the lineup who can put points up. I'm thinking about the over here as a sneaky play. What do you think about that one? Well, it concerns me because uh, I like the under here, mm -hmm. and um, it worries me. And and I do see that it is a pretty low total, so it is. I do see where you're coming from. Uh, let's just break it down, and maybe I can figure it out more. Thunder are number two in the league in defense, and the Spurs are number four. So this is, to me, just going to be a street fight. Mm -hmm. Carmelo Anthony back in the lineup Wednesday after missing Sunday's game. Steven Adams has missed the last three games with a calf contusion, but he is likely to mm -hmm. be back in the lineup. The Thunder have to play better against these Western Conference teams. They're one and six. Uh, so the key is getting Aldridge into foul trouble. That's what Minnesota was lucky enough to do. With Aldridge is, to me, their only legitimate, consistent scoring option until Kawhi comes back. He got into foul trouble, and they were completely screwed yeah. in that game versus the Wolves. And now that's just that's the answer to beating the Spurs right now. Mm -hmm. Get Go at Aldridge nonstop. Go at him every single play. Get him in trouble, and then the Spurs won't be able to score. Yeah. So now, I mean, it's not going to work just like it's not going to work just like it's, you know, printed. Uh, obviously, it's not just that easy to get Aldridge in foul trouble, and now he's going to be concerned, and Pop will be talking about it nonstop. But I like this. I like the under. You like the under. Yeah. I, I mean, both teams have been strong under trenders on the year, for sure. Uh, I can understand why. It's just a low total. Too good to be true, says Spurs are looking good again. OKC starts fast, but can't hang a full game at home. San Antonio, 100%, loves it. Reggie likes the Reggie says, like the over, Pete. Hako Schofield says, over with the Spurs. Uh, Alonzo Shiver says, OKC first half. Um, uh, Aspira Tolate says, OKC here. Spurs really missing Deadman and Simmons. Uh, all right. 
it's a that's that's an interesting game. Uh, I might be both both teams have been under trenders on the air. I understand that. I will take a shot with the over 197 and a half minus 101. I might be on the wrong side here though, but again, I have units to burn, which is pretty pretty stupid thing to say, but I can be a little bit less risk averse than I would be if I didn't. I'll take the over. Reggie agrees with me. I'll take the over. OKC Spurs over 197 and a half minus uh, 101 right now at uh, Pinnacle. Obviously, the uh, market is betting the under. How do you want to bet this game, Jim? I'm very concerned to go against you a second Look, time. I mean, you know. But I'll have to do okay. it. Okay. Uh, Daryl Lyles comes in and says the total has gone under in five of the Spurs' last yeah. six games when playing at home against the OKC. Project Carpe Diem, under for OKC mm-hmm. Spurs. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, um, and then Reggie has a good point. He says close games forces it to go over. Mm-hmm. Uh, Adrian A says too tricky to touch. This might not necessarily be a close game, though. The spread implies that it will be, but I could easily see a blowout either way. Um, I'm going to take the under. All right. Okay. Okay. The best line right now, it is a split. Mar- markets all over the place. We will give you bet DSI under 199 minus 110. Under Ooh. 199. So it's possible we could even both win if it lands on 198. I'm going to be on the over. I'm de- that's, look, that's definitely a borderline play. It's a lean. Both teams have been strong under trenders. Uh, other people have commented about how uh, you know San Antonio has been, been an under trender against OKC at home. Makes a lot of sense. I'm going to take a shot with the over 197 and a half minus 101. Jim's going to take the under 199 at bet DSI minus 110. That's why line shopping is so important. SBRodds.com is a free line shopping service that uh, that you can use. Jim and I going head to head. And again, this is a very borderline play. I don't like it nearly as much as some of the other plays on this card, like the Detroit over, like the friggin', uh, you know, uh, even the Miami pick I kind of like. I don't know. Uh, all right, so let's move on. Charlotte and Chicago is a very interesting game. Chicago having all kinds of issues. Starting, this, starting games slowly, and, Char- and Charlotte is starting games fast. So on paper, unless you expect one of these teams to uh, to change their form, uh, Charlotte on the first half might be worth a play, and I'm thinking just about the Charlotte team total over. I don't quite trust Chicago's uh, Chicago offensively. They might show up, but I feel like Charlotte should have an okay game offensively here. Those are my leans: Charlotte first half and the Charlotte team total over. What do you think, Jim? I like the Hornets. Uh, I like them a lot. Mm-hmm. I I think that because Batum Batum was out, mm-hmm. that. And they had they struggled in the early part of the season that we're going to find value on Charlotte, especially over the next few weeks. Now, the Bulls are getting Justin Holiday back. That should help a little bit. Uh, but they're averaging 12.7 first quarter points over the last three games. They're a bad team. Mm-hmm. And Batoon and Michael Kidd Gilchrist are starting to play very well. The better they play, the less pressure is on Malik Monk and some of these kids that they also have on this team. I like the Hornets here. Uh, I, I really like them. I, I like them um, first half and total. All right. Uh, the first half is uh, three and a half market wide, except Pinnacle has three. So we will credit you with that. And I will go on with that, you, with, that with you as well. Charlotte minus three, minus uh, 106. It just concerns me because Chicago's been starting slow and they know that they have to change that. So they might come out here and try to. Uh, but then again, if they get down, uh, Charlotte might run away with it. It's a tricky one. I will go on you, with you with that. Uh, Charlotte first half minus three. Minus 106. And I think I also like the Charlotte team total over. It's going to be 101 and a half minus 114. That's at Pinnacle. And I will take that one as well. Charlotte team total over 101 and a half minus 114. And Jim, you're on Charlotte first half? And full game. And the full game. Yeah. Okay. First half minus three, minus 106. And the uh, the full game for Jim is going to be minus six, minus 105. So a little bit of money coming in on Chicago, but uh, Jim taking Charlotte, minus six, minus 105. That's the line right now at Pinnacle. Batoon's just going to get more comfortable. Michael Kidd Gilchrist is playing very well. We believe mm-hmm. in Kemba Walker. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just I think this team has a lot of different uh, looks. Mm-hmm. I've always been a Frank Kaminsky fan. Mm-hmm. Not always been a Howard fan. I'm not a Howard fan, but he does give you a different look. Yeah. All right. Uh, Espirito late says first half Charlotte. Great pick. Never faded says Hornets first half and game. Nate back should spread the four better and free up, free up the bigs. Alonzo Shiver says Hornets win easy tonight. So it appears like everyone is uh, is agreeing with us. Jansen Bonzone says Charlotte Chicago full game over. That's why I was leaning as well, but I'm going on the Charlotte team total over because I don't totally trust Chicago's offensively, but I definitely like the uh, over on the uh, on the full game as well. Jansen Bonzone says Charlotte win by 10. Too good to be true says Hornets are a great team. That might, uh, you know, that everyone's agreeing with us, Jim, which sometimes can be a good a good thing and sometimes not be a good sometimes thing. Sometimes it could be a bad yeah. thing, but they all agreed with us on the Tampa Bay Lightning puck line and we won 6-1 yesterday, so I feel like if we're all on the same page, yeah. we're, uh, yeah. we look good yesterday, why not look good again today? Alright, we got a few more games. Let me just review the picks so far just to make sure that I got everything uh, for you, Jim. I'm on, uh, I'm on uh, where am I? I'm on the Knicks plus 8 
take the Knicks team total over 104 and a half. I'm Miami plus five. I'm on Detroit team total over 113 and a half. Oh, sorry, 103 and a half minus 114. And the full game over on that one, 209 and a half. On the OKC over 197 and a half minus 101. Charlotte first half minus three. And the Charlotte team total over 101 and a half minus 114. Now, Jim, here's all my picks for you. Make sure that I, I got them all, didn't miss anything. Cleveland minus six and a half. Spurs under 199. Charlotte first half minus three and the full game minus six. Detroit first half over 107 and the full game over 209 and a half and Washington minus four and a half minus 110. Did I miss anything? No, nope, we're good. All right, let's move on. Keep chugging along. Minnesota, Dallas. Obviously, Dallas is horrible. Minnesota playing better defensively recently. And I got to be thinking that Minnesota on the first half here is worth a play as well. Maybe Dallas team total under. What do you think, Jim? I think this is a tricky, trappy situation. Mm-hmm. It's so tricky. The Timberwolves know how bad the Mavericks are. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and I just, something just doesn't feel right. I just mm-hmm. don't feel, I feel so uncomfortable about the Timberwolves taking the Mavericks lightly that I almost want to take the Mavericks by the spread. Um, the Wolves' whole offense right now is based around Towns going to the rim hard, getting defenses to collapse, opening up easy shots. And if you understand that's what Minnesota is just going to do, you should be able, Carlisle should be able to figure out a way to defend it. Now, Dennis Smith Jr. had 27 points last game, but six turnovers to two assists. Now, I know he did play a little bit at the two. It wasn't just at the one. Mavs are getting Devin Harris back. Mm -hmm. I I just, um, I just feel like this is an uncomfortable situation. Mm -hmm. Um, Interesting. Uh, Reggie says Mavs in a good spot. Alonzo Shiver says Wolves first half and full game. Uh, Jansen Bonzone says Minnesota Dallas full game under. Definitely Minnesota's been playing better defense recently and Dallas can be shut down. Maybe just Dallas on the team total under would be a worth a shot. That's 103 if they hold them to under 100 at cashes. Uh, no. I'm I just, know. I'm uncomfortable with, I want to see Minnesota play against these bad teams uh-huh. and try hard. They're a very yeah. young team. Hopefully Jimmy Butler's talking about this in, in the dressing room. But I, <laughs> this is one of those things where I, as soon as I started starting this game, I was scared. Mm-hmm. I was afraid. Mm-hmm. And the NBA is just one of those leagues where yeah. you, you don't, you can't always believe what you've just seen. Yes. And especially when teams don't care about playing a 2-13 and 13 Maverick squad that looks bad. Yeah. What do you think about the Dallas team total under? It seems like uh, Minnesota, but yeah, you're right. Sometimes w- against the bad teams, they'll just like, all right, we know we're good defensively. We'll just let these guys score a little bit. Uh, this is a, I, my fuck. Yeah. Just all right. Don't feel good we'll come it. back to uh, this one. Let's get some uh, some interesting comments here. Perfect Rotation says, I'm with a bag on this one. It's a trap. Uh, Daryl Lyle says, under in Dallas Wolves. Uh, Jose Ruiz says, don't be scared. Take Minnesota to win and cover. They're having fun right now. Uh, Alonzo Shivers says Mavs have no clue how to play uh, team ball. Uh, too good to be true says I left it alone. Added Minnesota money line. That's a scared uh, move right there. Taking a big money line on the uh, instead of taking the uh, the points. Uh, that's interesting. Uh, Hako Schofield, we all got to hit like button. Thank you so much, Hako Schofield. Tyler Foster, holy shit! I actually woke up early enough for a live show. Badass. Thank you so much, Hako Foster. I mean Tyler Foster. <laughs> all right. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, Reggie says Mavs in a good spot. Armin and Josa asking about have the college basketball games been covered yet we are not covering college basketball in these shows just because we don't quite have time to either cover them or to prepare for them but starting on monday we will definitely be getting i will definitely i will definitely be getting college basketball in the late shows maybe we'll start to touch on it in the early shows we'll see but as of right now we are not covering college basketball in these shows also with the early show you guys can say hey i'm really interested in this college basketball game we'll come back five, six hours later and hammer it. Yes. Uh, we yes. do have a, a, a new watcher, a first time live watcher, Kaisa Kyle. No, oh, very nice. Thank you nice. for watching. Thank you for being a part of this. Okay, very, very nice, very nice. All right, let's move on. Next game uh, on the docket is uh, is uh, is Portland Sacramento. Uh, that's another inch one Sacramento, awful. This is gonna be a pass for me. Do you have a play on that one, Jim? I do have mm-hmm. a play on this, and I'd like to break it down with okay. you and see what you think. First off, I like the under, mm-hmm. and I'm interested in the Kings under. Mm-hmm. Now, I know we just saw them play so badly on this East Coast swing, and uh, you know, you're know you not just you're not supposed to believe everything you see. They, they, they lost by a combined 91 points in these three games. They, uh, they've allowed their teams that are playing against 55.5% from the field, teams uh, averaging 118 points against them on the swing. They're 29th in the NBA scoring and 93.6 points per game. They didn't break 92 in any of these three games. But I've been making mistakes with the Blazers, and I watched them closely lately and tried to figure out what is what I'm doing wrong. And it's just clear that this is not last year's Blazers. They are third in the league yes. in defense. 
They have a lot of depth. Now, Shabazz Napier has usurped Evan Turner on the depth chart, so he gives a chance for Lillard and McCollum to rest while keeping up the scoring and ball movement. You know, they, uh, with, with Chief out, with Aminu out, Caleb Swanigan is starting. He only played six minutes, not looking good. They clearly have a problem with Aminu out at the four. Now, I know they have Ed Davis, who can slip down into the four, but they don't do that for, for obvious reasons. He doesn't like it there. He doesn't feel as comfortable there. So with this hole in the four, I don't see how they're going to be able to score enough points. Okay. Uh, Alonzo Shiver says, this is a trap game, Jimmy. Under might be a great play. I also made a final uh, decision. I am going to take the Dallas team total under 103 minus 110. That's a, uh, that's a play at Pinnacle. So I am throwing that one on. Dallas team total under 103 minus 110. All right. So do you want to make a pick on this Portland-Sacramento game, Jim? we got to move do. it on I would bit. like to take the under, and I'm curious really? what the Kings okay. team under is. The Kings team total under is low. It's uh, it's uh, Sacramento. Let's see. It would be 90, 96, 95 and a half at Pinnacle, 96 at Heritage, or 96 minus 110. Hmm. Well, I'm going to definitely take – I'm going to take the under uh, on both the game and the Kings team okay. total. The team total under, best line right now, line shopping as we speak here at sbrodds.com would be uh, 198.5 minus 109. 198.5, that's a great under. line. We just saw the Blazers shut down the Magic, mm -hmm. who have so much more scoring than this Kings team. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I'm, I like this play, so I'm going to take the Kings under and the full game under okay kings under uh kings under 96 minus 110 that is a line at uh, at heritage pinnacle has 95 and a half but heritage has 96 sacramento under 96 minus 110 on the team total now let's move on to the phoenix lakers game first game of course was close very high scoring second game somewhat close very low scoring i believe you had the under on that phoenix lakers game the second one uh great call on that one jim here we have another very high total and uh phoenix getting a decent amount of points i was thinking maybe a shot with Phoenix here? I don't know. What do you think, Jim? This is a tough spot. They scored yeah. 60 less points in the second time they yeah. met. What, what, the volatility with these two young teams is nuts. Mm -hmm. uh, so Clarkson slowly taking over the point guard position from Lonzo. Uh, and Luke Walton has to be very careful with how they handle this. Thank God Magic is there to help. You can't just destroy Lonzo's confidence this early in the season. So Walton said Lonzo's still their starting point guard. He's going to get decent minutes, even to the detriment of the team. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a very tough spot. Lakers are far and away the worst three-point shooting team in the league at 28.8%. No other team's under 32%. Uh, you know, and then the Suns just allowed the Rockets to put up 90 points last night in the first half. That's the second most first half points a team has allowed in the shot clock era. Mm -hmm. uh, Devin Booker put up 36. Greg Monroe, who we didn't even think was going to play, is now now playing for the team. Put up 20 and 11 last night with Tyson Chandler, who's uh, out and he still may be out questionable tonight with sickness. This is just uh, I'm leaving this game alone. Well, why not the under? Why don't you like the under? I mean, I feel like uh, the the game is more likely to resemble the last game than the first game, right? Well, the Suns just allowed 90 points. Like, I know, I understand you're not supposed to have a recency bias, mm -hmm. but I thought the Rockets were going to score easily. But 90 first half points? Mm -hmm. I mean, what, what are they doing? Greg Monroe is obviously not comfortable defensively in the system. Mm -hmm. And will what, what, 24 hours change that? I mean, Devin Booker is, is hot, so hot right now. He's going to put up, he's, he's, I, I can almost guarantee he's going to put up 30 or more. And if Clarkson does take over from Lonzo, Clarkson's scoring way more than Lonzo. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. It's just Aspiratole, a tough one. Aspiratole says this goes, goes over sometimes. Uh, yeah, on Friday night games, the Lakers do run up the score. All right, uh, I, will, uh, I will hold off on that one. Sun's on a back-to-back, -back, but on the road now, Lakers first half, a great play, Jimmy. That's an interesting uh, opinion from Alonzo Shivers. That is, a, that is an interesting call, and I, I respect Especially it. Especially with Tyson Chandler out. All right, uh, let's uh, quickly get to the last game, New Orleans and Denver. It's an interesting one. It's going to be a pass for me. I'm going to uh, review the uh, comments. Jim, and if you have anything to say about New Orleans, Denver, let us know. I do. I have okay. Denver, and we'll be taking okay. Denver. They've had three days off, and they're likely to get Gary Harris back. That's a huge deal because then they can put Barton back on the bench and have a really good second unit. Harris is hitting 44% from three and is a great perimeter defender. Now, the Pelicans' perimeter defense has been so bad lately. Last five games, teams are shooting 42% from three against them. Rondo will be playing a few more minutes. But I really like this. And so, obviously, when we're dealing with the Pelicans, we have to deal with how do you handle Cousins yeah. and Davis. And this Nuggets team has four bigs that can play. Mm -hmm. So they'll have Millsap and Jokic and then throw Plumlee and uh, Fareed at them. Uh, I love that. Mm -hmm. I love the fact that they have four bigs. I think this is a really good spot. And uh, not everybody believes in it. Um, 
Alonzo Shivers is saying, no, Jimmy. Yeah. But I, it's going to happen, Alonzo. That one makes me nervous. Taco Schofield says Denver uh, will win. Kobe Valentine says, I back Denver. Uh, uh, CC924 says, I like Denver at home to bounce back after that ugly loss to Portland. This one makes me nervous, giving, giving, the, giving New Orleans four and a half points. But if you want it, I will uh, write it down on your official picks, Jim. I want it badly. All right. Denver minus four and a half, minus 103 is the best line right now at Pinnacle. Let's quickly get to some uh, some, some, some comments, and then we'll uh, we'll move on. Carlos Morales says, low shack on the bag thank you so much for your wisdom i'm winning big and up this week you guys rock blessing to you all blessings back at you carlos yeah, Morales. Pal. keep getting all right. paid buddy alonzo shiver says i think pelicans might take first half jansen bonzone says cousins is a hothead alonzo shiver says no jimmy no all right let's see uh, other other comments here just quickly looking for comments and then we will uh, sum up and then we will the move mets, on. mets junkies trap house four bigs should handle the two mm-hmm. i i really think it's going to help them now uh, they want to stop using four bigs. They mm-hmm. want to go break cut either for it's probably going to be free to be honest mm-hmm. with you. But right now it's really helpful to have those four guys to keep going at them and going at them and going at them. Jansen Bonz- Bonzone says Cousins is a hothead. Let's get him in foul trouble. Let's get him whining. I, I like this spot. Kevin Bartlett says you guys are the fucking best all in caps sbr brass sbr ownership sbr higher ups <laughs> take note kevin bartlett says you guys are the fucking best all in caps hako Schofield just says always love this fucking show sbr higher ups sbr brass sbr ownership take note thank you very much <laughs> thank you very much all right uh let's see all right i guess we look i i, I would love to have another 15 minutes here to talk about this but uh, let's wrap it up let's summarize the picks my picks in nba Knicks plus eight Knicks team total over 104 and a half Miami plus five going head to head against Jim. Detroit team total over 103 and a half and Detroit, Indiana over 209 and a half. I'm on OKC over 197 and a half going head to head against Jim. Charlotte first half minus three. Charlotte team total over 101 and a half and Dallas team total under 103. Jim's picks are as follows. Uh, let's see. Cavaliers minus six and a half. Spurs under 199. Charlotte first half minus three and Charlotte full game minus six. Jim's on Washington minus four and a half. Detroit over 209 and a half and Detroit first half over 107. Sacramento under 198 and a half and the Sacramento team total under 96 minus 110 and Denver minus four and a half. Did I miss anything? No, you got it. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to our channel. Now we've put a lot of work into producing all these free videos, so please help us out and keep all our content free for you forever by simply liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. Now not to mention a visit to our industry leading website will warm the hearts of all our SBR employees, especially myself. Now the links are over there to the left, uh, so do check those out. Thanks for watching.